Good morning, everyone. And a quick reminder to those of you who have opened this message quickly that today, Thursday, this afternoon at 3.30, we will be having our Zoom gathering with the members of Mosaic Law Synagogue in which we'll be having conversations with Mayor Daryl Steinberg. The topics have opened up since we first publicized it and the questions we have received are certainly around COVID-19 response, but they're also about police reform and housing and homelessness. You can find the link on the email with this message. Also a reminder uh, concerning Holy Communion. Uh, I neglected to celebrate Holy Communion last weekend with you, so this weekend we will be celebrating Communion. So please remember to have some bread or crackers and some juice or other beverage as you prepare for the worship experience this weekend. Also in this week's worship, we shall begin eight weeks of celebrating our confirmation class members. Each week, one member of the class will be featured. Their parents will introduce them, they will read the scripture, and they will share a brief faith statement. This week, we will hear from J.J. Coker, uh, who continues to impress his church family with his thoughtfulness and his loving spirit. I wanted to share a personal word today. I wasn't able to watch the entire memorial service for George Floyd as he was laid to rest in Houston, but what I did see had a profound impact on me, and so I thought I would share, uh, share it with you. I was deeply impacted by the extraordinary outpouring of love and compassion that this event expressed. There was not an ounce of anger or rage there was no hate expressed toward the man who killed Mr. Floyd. There were calls for justice and calls for reform, which are often part of the black church experience. But healing love was the sentiment that was most in evidence. When I arrived in California, I was working as an associate pastor at a large African-American church in Los Angeles. I was immediately immersed in the African-American world. I was delighted by the level of acceptance I experienced without having to prove anything. And I became, among many other things, the secretary for the Political Action Committee for Black Clergy Alliance in Los Angeles. I was a brother and part of the team. I still count Holman Church in Los Angeles as my home church. And when I go back to visit, almost 40 years later, I'm still included as part of the family and celebrated. It was here that I first experienced the soul-felt, heart-felt love of the African-American world. I'd lived for two years in East Africa, but I came out of a very white, middle-class world in Britain. What impacted me the most was the African-American instinct not to hate or abuse. Even when people I knew were on the receiving end of hate and abuse, they did not respond in like manner. For generations, that generous love has been abused and ridiculed by the majority white society. No amount of violence, lynching, bigotry, meanness and rudeness has changed the heart and soul of the African American world. I believe that at the root of racism, one dimension is a deep envy for the healthy souls and hearts of, of black folk. It's deeply threatening to many white people. White racism is continuing to break black lives. Our national leaders are defensive, passive, and have lost all sense of human decency. The COVID-19 economy is disproportionately breaking the lives of poor people and people of color. Fear and bigotry are breaking our communities. Our denial of reality is breaking our hope for a better world, for the beloved community that Jesus taught. Our policing and criminal justice system is clearly broken. And I say, let it break. Something needs to die before we see signs of resurrection. It's only in a sense 
that when we give up the hope of fixing our systems, that we free ourselves to create new ones. Together, let's seek to learn some basic life lessons of love and resilience from our African-American sisters and brothers. We can do so much better. America really can be different and reflect that beloved community that we so cherish. Let's pray together. Loving God, we thank you that in Jesus Christ we have a vision for the human family. We see what love can do and what love can be. We understand the deeper demands of love when we look for justice, when we look for peace. And we know that there can be no peace without justice. There needs to be reform in such ways that every child of our community knows that they are loved and cherished and that they have all the basic needs of life fulfilled. We pray that you will bless each one of us in the St. Mark's Church family. As we lift up prayers for those who are sick or grieving in our midst, let us also lift up prayers for ourselves that we may be transformed by this historic moment, that we may learn the ways of love, of affirmation, of resisting the bigotry and the hate and the fear out in the world around us. Give us your strength, give us your spirit, but above all, give us your love, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I wish you a blessed day today and every day.